With La Ventura, Michelangelo Antonioni introduced a new cinematic language. He did this not by necessarily inventing anything new, but instead taking the cinematic format and abstracting it. Crucial to this is his choice of locations. Something that for more traditional filmmakers was mere background became a central focus for Antonioni. In some instances, the details of a location are the only thing his camera seems concerned about. Here people's faces are obscured, out of focus, whilst the camera follows the markings on a wall, or up the twists and turns of industrial piping. And he'll focus on the textures of a building, only to pull back and reveal a character. Architecture seems to dominate Antonioni's protagonists, making them feel insignificant amongst these large structures. In La Ventura, there's a more literal connection. It's revealed that Sandro originally had dreams to be an architect. But he instead chased money and didn't follow his true passion, which is likely a core reason why he is so deeply unhappy. These historic buildings, grandiose designs, seem to cause him discomfort. In response, he trashes a young eye's work, jealous like a petulant child, or tries to shut out these surroundings and instigate sex as a form of escape. <laughs> In Antonioni's films, there is often a contrast between the old world and the new. After the destruction caused by the Second World War, the traditional way of life had been destabilized, and what it was being replaced with seems to cause a disconnect between these characters. They are seemingly incapable of being satisfied in their lives. There's a spiritual vacuum, or as Antonioni coined, a sickness of Eros. La Clisse, the last film in a thematic trilogy that started with Laventura, opens in this sterile modern apartment, which is a fitting location for a breakup. There's a stilted energy in the room and a breakdown of communication. Outside the apartment is a building that resembles a mushroom cloud hinting at a fear the society has since the emergence of the atomic bomb. Even though Vittoria finds a new lover, this modern suburb, where they often meet, seems doom-laden. It was originally built by Mussolini, yet was unfinished, and didn't near completion until Le Clisse's principal photography. With the film's final sequence, the narrative ends up resembling this unfinished building that seemed particularly significant for Antonioni. We expect the couple to meet here once again, yet neither appear. So it ends instead without them, simply focusing on details of the surroundings and random inhabitants. It's like the reverse of an establishing sequence, the one that's perversely drawn out. The location's mediocrity and lack of character feels ominous. It's a place befitting a spiritual malaise. And the sequence ends, fixated on a street lamp in its searing artificiality similar to the street advertisements that saturate the Los Angeles of Zabriskie Point, a sign of corporatism run amok, or the menacing industrial locations in Red Desert that are polluted, poisonous, and are a cause of severe anxiety for the lead protagonist, Juliana. The rest of the populace, like these men of industry, seem to easily coexist in this new world. Yet Juliana, like many of Antonioni's characters, feels imprisoned by these environments. They can often be found caught within frames, lost within the maze of their surroundings, struggling to retain their identity. And his locations often have horizontal lines that separate characters, suggesting the distance between them. Ropes on a church bell can have a similar effect, but also act as a line of tension between lovers. All the lines are hard, obtrusive, elements of a space. In La Clisse, the bars from a gate are used to mirror shots between Vittoria and her partners, one at the end of a relationship, and again at the start of a new one, which foreshadows that it too is doomed to fail. There's a similar mirroring here with Piero when he meets with an escort, and then later with Vittoria behind the same gate after she's left his apartment. It implies that Piero views her in a similar light, as just an object to consume sexually, which is a recurring theme in Antonioni's films. To escape these trappings, Characters often look out at new horizons. In La Note, this is most pronounced, as Lydia's in hospital with a friend who is near death. 
which is how she feels about her marriage. It's dead, and she needs to escape. So she wanders around the land and watches rockets being launched into the sky. A number of these characters appear truly joyful when they're above ground, as they can transcend their environments. They can finally look down, and what once was domineering is now small and distant. The vast expanse of natural landscapes can also create a sense of freedom, providing a place for a more organic coexistence. In Red Desert, Juliana finds escape from her reality by telling a story about a young girl on a beach. And for once in the film, the images seem pure. The industrial dirge and artificial looking colors are absent. These rocks, which resemble human bodies, appear to have a life of their own. In Laventura, when a character goes missing, their friends search for her on a dead volcano. Anna! This jagged rock feels cold and brutal. It seems to imply that these characters' deep emotions have eroded. Yet there's the potential for them to erupt again. Nature can also coalesce with the artificial, so it can have the appearance of life. Or nature learns to coexist with the seemingly unnatural. But at what cost? Allora, sono uccellino, a sal in mezzo muore. Ormai gli uccellini lo sanno, e non ci passano più. Yeah. Towards the end of La Note, when Lydia's husband finally tries to reunite with her, it's the first time in a long period that we see an open expanse. But it's still an artificial creation, a golf course, and their attempt at reconciliation is conflicted. It's similar to the park in Blurb, which is also a man-made construct. Nature itself has become so abstract that we start to question its concrete existence. And as we increasingly move away from the natural world, we risk losing our foundations. So, what's the solution? <laughs> 